Welcome back to another week of On Time Online. My name is Hayden Ratner. I'm the senior pastor here at Walk Church, and I just want to welcome you into this experience. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider hitting that subscribe button, that little bell next to it. That's going to give you a notification every time we go live or push out some content from our church. If you're watching this on Facebook, maybe somebody in your network of friends may want to hear this word as well today. Maybe hit that start a watch party button or tap that like and that love button. Let's get some emojis popping up on the screen. Feel free to engage with us in the comments as well. I'm excited because we're leaning into Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount this week. One of our leaders is going to log on and share a word every day at 10 a.m. And they're looking at Matthew chapter 5, teaching on the Beatitudes. The word Beatitude means supreme blessedness. In other words, Jesus is teaching us how to live the blessed life. So one of our leaders is now about to share the word with us. Let's jump in. Well, welcome here this morning or whatever time you're watching this. My name is Hayden Ratner. I'm the senior pastor here at Walk Church, and I'm sitting here with my friend, Dave Taplin, owner-operator of the Chick-fil-A right here in Las Vegas on Eastern and Ione Street, and it's a joy to be with you for our on-time online. We've been doing these on-time onlines daily, and they've been feeding my soul. I hope they've been helpful for you. Uh, But today's a little bit different as I thought we could lean into the subject of leadership and learn from one of the best kingdom leaders in our city here today, Dave. Dave is here. He's going to tell you a little bit more about himself, what he does. We're just going to have a a dialogue around leadership, hospitality, Chick-fil-A. Come on, heaven's chicken. Amen. Right? (laughs) And we're going to go ahead and lean into some of these questions. Dave is married to Dana. How long have you all been married? 15 years in January, this January. 15 in January. This is a big, you got something special planned? Don't tell us yet. <laughs> if, if we can plan something, we'll plan something. If we're there's a, to see yes. if we can plan something. If you can get out, if we can get out. I love that, that Dave and Dana have five kids, and they all start with the best letter in the alphabet, H. Amen. Hence Hayden, right? Come on. Uh, Holland, Hudson, Hayes, Haddon, like Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And Hawkins, and so we're grateful to have Dave on on time online today. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Let's get into it. Right. The first question I want you to speak to, and maybe you can shed some wisdom, is is regarding the season that we're in. We're in a challenging time for everybody, even in the food and hospitality world. This this season of Corona, COVID nineteen shutdowns, social distancing, mm-hmm. things like that. How has this season in general impacted you as a leader? Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is priorities. Priorities. Um, So for us, uh, like many of you, uh, we we have busy schedules, busy families. uh, And when else do we get to have family dinner every night? Come on. Um, That's good. our, Our three oldest and soon to be our four oldest kids are, are playing sports every night. Um, they've got homework. And to have that, to have that flexibility now and um, not have to be at certain places, uh, doing, we're doing essential things now. Yeah. You know, some, sometimes only essential things. Come on. Um, priorities has been the biggest thing that God's taught me. Not giving up my God time, having my God time every morning. Yeah. Um, having family time. Uh, intentional family time, especially family dinners, uh, enjoying a meal together, talking about our highs and lows, yeah. talking about the day, um, essential things in the business, uh, having given up meeting with my leaders. That's good. Um, the things, doing the things that are really important. So uh, God has, has challenged me to think about, okay, what can I not give up right now? And what, what yeah. do I really need to, to focus on and put time and mm. investment into? Mm. I love that question right there, asking yourself, in a self-reflection way, what can I not give up right now? And I think by answering that question, what can I not give up right now, helps you shape what are my priorities? The answer to that question is going to help you th- say, okay, these are the things that I prioritize and that I need to, need to create space for, make time for. I love how you model that, and, and that's something that the Lord is teaching you in, in this season. Um, Priorities, that's just a big deal. Amen. Anything more on that that you wanted to, to hit on, or we'll keep on going? Yeah, I, um, so my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, grew up in the Depression. Yeah. And uh, when this whole thing got 
really intense, which was probably about two and a half months ago for our country. Sure. Um, and we started to consider shutdown and, you know, economic shutdown and things like that. I thought about my grandma and how uh, during the Great Depression, she would save trash liners. Wow. So she would take out the trash to the dumpster, pour the trash in, and keep the, the trash sack in the trash can because she couldn't afford, they couldn't afford to buy more trash Insane. bags. Wow. That kind of stewardship. And what I told my team when this, when this happened was, yeah. okay, guys, we need to have a Great Depression mindset right now. We need mm -hmm. to have a Great Depression mindset. Um, we need to prioritize relationships, obviously, um, take care of our people. And, and also, we, we've got to be good stewards of the stuff that God's given us right now. That's great. And we don't, we don't need to be spending in excess right now. We need right. to be making very wise investments. Love that. Yeah. That, when you said priority, one thing that I didn't think through is how do we prioritize stewardship? How do we prioritize what we steward, our resources, our relationships? Um, one thing that I've seen you prioritize, like you just said, is, is people in this season. And I love how Dave, one thing I love about Dave and one of the reasons why I wanted to have him on today is that you're a leader that leads from the front lines. Mm -hmm. In other words, one thing I love about Jesus is he never asked his disciples to do something he didn't do first, mm -hmm. right? Even to the point of why did Jesus get baptized? There's probably a few different answers, but one of the answers is to model what he would call us to do as disciples. Um, I love that oftentimes when I come through the Chick-fil-A drive through which, which is often, I love Chick-fil-A, my wife and I and our family do, um, it's not rare that we see you out on the line greeting people, um, helping people, taking people's order, pushing cars through, taking payments if needed, um, saying hi to the families, and I love that you're doing what you expect your team to do, and you're modeling. How important is modeling? How important is leading from the front lines? What have you seen that do to your team? Yeah. So first of all, I want to take a moment to thank my everyday heroes, which are uh, my team members. Amen. Our team members who uh, make all this happen yeah. uh, moment by moment. And so good. are the, um, the, the foundation um, that God's given us to, to, to run this business. Um, Amen. So I, <clears throat> I want to be a leader that would run through a wall for my team, Amen. for my, for my people. And I, I, yeah. I, want, I want my team, I want team members who would run through a wall for me. Yeah. And that's not going to happen if uh, the leader is not available, number one, and is not an example, number two. Mm. Yeah. At, mm. at a minimum, at a minimum, the follower is going to mimic the leader's behavior. So good. And at a maximum, they're going to magnify their behavior. Come on, one more time. Say that one more time for us. I'm taking notes so. <laughs> right now. I need, I need this word. At a minimum, the follower is going to mimic the leader's behavior. Yeah. And at a maximum, they're going to magnify their behavior. So it's kind of like so how the good. old saying goes, what our parents did in moderation, we do in excess. Yeah. Um, and so our first core value in the restaurant is customers first. It's, it's service. We're, we're, there to, we're there to serve guests. Right. But my team's not going to serve guests if I don't really believe in serving guests and if I don't model serving guests with my time and my energy. And so I can't let guests go by not being served in front of me right. and expect them to serve guests and for guests to be the most important thing to them if I'm not modeling it. That's right. Yeah, I, if we can go back to that word priority, you're saying, hey, our priority here at Chick-fil-A is serving guests. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, I got to model the priority. I love that right there. And the, and, the, and the team members say, okay, at minimum, I can mimic that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a really good leader, I'm going to maximize my leadership and, and I'm going to magnify what I see my leader doing. So that's, that's really good. Two, two words I, I heard you say there is be available mm -hmm. and be an example. Mm -hmm. One thing that I love to coach our team on and I try to live by myself is um, – this, this reminder that God's looking less for my ability and more for my availability. Amen. That God's looking less for, I think it's 19 times in the Bible God says he's able. He, he, he's, he's able to do far more than we can ask or think. So God's looking less for our ability because he doesn't need it. 
but I really do think he's looking for our available, uh, uh, availability and to use us Amen. to get in the game. So really good thoughts there, and I love how you model that. It's, been, it's been contagious for me. It's been, it's been challenging for me to ask, okay, am I modeling like Dave, <laughs> right, no. as he's wow. modeling like Christ in wow. serving? When you hear the word hospitality, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a common word, but it's kind of a cliche word. It could potentially lose its grip if we don't define it well. When you, when you hear the word hospitality, what comes to your mind? What do you think about when you hear that phrase? Yeah, so it's certainly a big word, especially here locally. Uh, UNLV has the number one hospitality program in the world. Wow. And so That's awesome right there. It's a... Uh, yeah, our, our local economy is driven by hospitality. Right. And um, That's great. for me, when I look at that word hospitality, I break it down, and I see the word hospital in there. My goodness. And a hospital is where people go to get healed. Um, That's great. So That's for, great. I, it, I think about the word uh, also restaurant and, and restoration, and they mm. come from the same root yeah. as well. Yep, that's great. And people should be restored uh, after they come to us, they wow. should have uh, a feeling of refreshment. Um, I think about a synonym. The first synonym that comes to my mind with hospitality is is welcoming. Yeah, you know we need to be welcoming, and and as followers of Christ, we need to uh, we need to present the aroma of Christ. Right. And there shouldn't be any doubt. Um, <clears throat> there shouldn't be any doubt. Uh, it's like Jesus said in in John chapter thirteen. Uh, by this, all men will know that well, you are no. my disciples. That's if so you good. love one another. Yeah. And how? What? What better way can we show love than through hospitality? Right. Um, right. Yeah, that's a way to see people restored. Even before you said restored, I saw the word rest. Hmm. You know, uh, people. This idea of coming to a restaurant should have a feel and an expression, a culture of I'm resting right now. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes the whole team. The my pleasures, the how can I help you, here's some extra sauce, Um, can I get you a refill, you know, here just take the lid. I mean, like you guys model that so that there's an idea of I don't even need to get up right now, Hmm. I'm being restored right now. That's a a crazy thought. And I think that's a thought that the church needs to be more aware of. Hmm. I think that leaders in churches, believers in Christ need to have this idea that I'm in the business of hospitality as well. Absolutely. I'm in the business of bringing people to the hospital of the healer, Mm -hmm. who is Jesus, and in order to do that, we need to be welcoming. That's a a great word. Amen. Yeah. Anything else there that you'd feel like would be helpful to add when it comes to, um, you know, just thinking as, as, that's hospitality in your realm as a believer in Christ and as a, a fellow leader. Is this something that you've sensed, man? Just the big C church yeah. could grow in this area. Absolutely. Um, people, people know if we want to serve them or not. People, people can tell based on our faces if we yeah. want. Yeah. Uh, if if we want to, if we're welcoming, if 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 we're approachable, if we're going to serve. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can all be, we can all be That's my great. pleasure people. And yeah. uh, when when we when we look to hire and select people, we're, we're looking for team members who it it is genuinely their pleasure. They get pleasure out of serving people. Wow. That, that my pleasure response is really just a genuine response from the heart. Right. And, uh, we need to, we need to have pleasure. Uh, we need to take pleasure and joy and receive joy as a body to when, when we serve, when we serve others, when we serve the Lord and serve others. Yeah. It's not just a statement. It's a attitude, right? It's like, Hey, it's, it's my pleasure to serve you is, is an attitude that you guys embody. And I think that that's definitely something that Jesus modeled. The church can model that as well. Amen. Like, as Christ is in us, we're becoming more hospitable. It is kind of the outflow, yeah. the natural outflow of what has been given to us. Amen. Amen. I like that word hospitality, priority. Another big word that I just want to put in front of Dave that Again, I've seen you live out and that the Chick-fil-A company in a, as a whole lives out is just this phrase, generosity. Mm-hmm. Generosity is a big deal in the kingdom. It's, it's one of our core values here at Walk Church, generous living. It's something that we're called to, to live loosely. Maybe as you've heard Pastor Vance say at Hope Church, just 
live like this. So you can't grip a hold of anything, and something else can't grip you because you're holding it loosely. Mm -hmm. um, that idea of generous living. You guys gave out multiple scholarships in the past month. One of our church members, Rachel, was able to be a recipient of that. She's on the Chick-fil-A staff there. And um, man, we've just been grateful. You guys have partnered with us as well as many organizations throughout our city and community to just help meet needs, make a difference. Why is generosity such a big deal for you guys? Hmm. And, and how, how are you coaching your team to be generous? Hmm. Two questions there, sorry. Good. No, I love them. Um, Chick-fil-A is um, set on being the, the world's most caring company. Wow. That is, that is the actual mission statement of Chick-fil-A, Inc. Uh, Atlanta, world's Georgia. most caring company. The world's most caring company. Never heard that before. Wow. Okay. And so uh, we cannot be a caring company without being a giving company. Yeah, um, so true. We cannot just take from the community. Uh, we need to give back. Love that. To the community. So uh, as we have been blessed, uh, <clears throat> as we have been blessed in, in the last month, we have been able to, in turn, um, bless others. And uh, yeah. so... So I want to speak at our restaurant level, but then also maybe challenge the listeners and the viewers um, uh, on a personal level sure. in that um, there are a lot of needs right now. Right. There are a lot of needs. All you, if you just open your eyes and look around, you can see some needs. Sure. We, we were able to, to feed thousands, to give thousands of meals in the last uh, 30 days, mm. um, feeding uh, the police, the fire department, wow. EMS, wow. Republic Services, uh, medical workers, nurses, uh, teachers. Uh, there is there is no shortage of needs. There's no shortage of uh, need for hospitality and love. Yeah. In hmm. in the world and um, and also giving financially, we've been able to increase our giving in the last month. And what I would um, challenge the the viewers and the listeners uh, is on a on a personal level. Uh, what what can you what can you do right now? What who who is in need yeah. in your community? Is there uh, is there a, a widow um, in the neighborhood that needs you to buy grocery or go get them groceries? Even yeah, uh, is there yeah. someone that needs needs some help with their yard? Right, do, doing doing yard work. Mm -hmm. um, to to go out and to to find someone to serve because there are plenty. That's there big. are plenty of needs. We. I, I was fortunate this morning, I was blessed this morning to be able to ride my bike with my seven-year-old son to Coronado High School Wow! and see the weekly food distribution from Three Square that, that happens there every Tuesday morning. And we saw hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds of cars. Yeah. Of people who, mm. who need food. And... And I was ex able to explain that to my son, to Hayes. Um, and the first thing that he said was, Daddy, we should give them some food. Wow. Mm. Um, so. My goodness. We can all, Get we can all contribute yeah. to that. Yeah, we can all. We can all serve. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. So, Ta yeah. Thank you for taking us into that moment yeah, with you and pleasure. your son today. Wow. Yeah, generosity has been something that has it's been a game changer for my life, and it's been cool to see how our church has risen up in this time. We had a, a team of volunteers, just dream team members here at Walk Church, just live out what you just said. They just said, hey, Pastor Hyden, team, we want to just go ahead and initiate making a difference and bring relief, and we were able to start uh, just a little campaign of care called COVID Relief. And um, if you're watching this and you need to tap into that, you can go to walkchurch.com and click the tab COVID-19. That's going to direct you direct, right, right to a portal, right to a website where you can get care and relief if you need it. Um, and uh, and I, I'm grateful for how you guys have just been on the front lines of modeling that throughout this journey. It's, it's, Truly it's Christ in you. Yeah. Amen. Wow. That, that leads me to this, this next word, and I know we're dropping some some key phrases and words on you here today, but it's on time online, all right? We're, we're, we're online, and it's on time, and I hope that you're logging on right now. St stay with us here. The next word um, 
is endurance, is endurance. I, I know that um, the Lord saw my endurance in my prayer life hmm. as I first encountered Chick-fil-A in the East Coast <laughs> and began to pray, right? I, I said this in a sermon the other day. I said, if you bring your need to Jesus, you position yourself for a miracle. Hmm. And I said, Lord, we need a miracle in Las Vegas, we need a Chick-fil-A in Las Vegas. <laughs> we need some of that chicken with that yellow sauce, that Chick-fil-A sauce, and some real sweet tea. Amen? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, need, we need Chick-fil-A. And then the day I heard it was coming, oh, Lord, <laughs> I was invited to uh, the, f- the first ceremony where you and Dana were introduced as the owners of the, the first Chick-fil-A right here on Eastern. And um, just got to hear your heart, hear your story, hear your journey, and realize, man, this is a journey of endurance, that this didn't just happen out of nowhere. This was a lot of prayer, a lot of investment, a lot of money, a lot of, a lot of calling, a lot of stepping out on faith, even though you might not know what is around the corner. Talk to us about the word endurance. Maybe there's somebody watching this or listening to this right now that says, I think I'm going to throw in the towel. I think I might give up on this dream. I think I might, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's not for me. Have you ever had moments like that? And, mm-hmm. and how'd you push through? Mm-hmm. So speaking of endurance, uh, the first person that I, I want to give some credit to is my wife, yeah. Dana. That's good. Um, because in order for her to support this journey that we've been on, um, she's moved, we've moved 16 times. In our marriage. Say that one more time. 16. 16. Somebody type 16 in the times. comments. 16. All right? 16. And uh, she's had all five of our children in five different states. Uh, that, wow. that, is, that is some endurance wow. right there. So I got to give some credit to my wife. Absolutely. Uh, love you. Love you, Dana. Yeah. Um, and I, I would just, I would point out the fact that we live in a culture nowadays where uh, there is not enough emphasis in, in coaching on resilience. Yeah. And, and on what happens when you get knocked down. So good. And how getting knocked down is, a, is an important part of our process. Right. And nothing good, nothing good in life comes without hard work, risk, and sacrifice. Yeah. Nothing. And it's helpful. Yeah, a- amen, and, and, and we, need to, we need to get our, our strength from the Lord, but we're not called to be quitters. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I started as a, as a team member with Chick-fil-A uh, July 13, 2009, almost n- 11 years ago. Wow. And A team member just like a staff member? Just, just like a normal team member. Okay, got it. And um, it wasn't until three and a half years ago, or a little over three years ago, that we opened up here that I became a freestanding restaurant owner. Excuse me. And so it, it took seven years from hire, moment of hire, right. to becoming a freestanding owner. And I, and I just shared how many times we moved. Right. And there were many times during that process mm. that I didn't, I didn't know if Chick-fil-A was going to work out for me. Right. I didn't, for me specifically, I wasn't great at the interview process about yeah. articulating myself and showing confidence right. and um, inspiring that, that confidence for people to, to follow me and to, to give me the nod, to wow. give me an opportunity. But yeah. I started as a team member and finally got an opportunity to become a, a Chick-fil-A owner in a low-volume mall. Man. And then three years ago, a little over three years ago, this opportunity happened. And, wow. And, and uh, we'd been praying about this for a long time, and certain people had, had told me, Dave, I don't know if this is going to work out for you. Yeah. And, um, but there were also people like Dana in my life and, yeah. and, and other, um, friends and, and, um, uh, other, other people trying to become operators as well that would, in, that would encourage me. Mm. And so that when the tough times did come, yeah. um, I, I would always ask myself, okay, what can I learn from this beat down? <laughs> wow. What can I learn from I just the beat, got beat down? down. <laughs> yeah. What can I, what can I learn yep. from this? Yeah. How can I grow? Yeah. Okay, instead of quitting, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grow. Man, come on. That's so good. Uh, one thing I, I've heard from, from Michael Jordan's story, and maybe you've been following along with The Last Dance, 
series that's been uh, shown on ESPN um, was the quote that Michael Jordan never lost, he only learned. So even if the scoreboard was different at the end of the game, he said, what can I learn from this? If I learned, I still won. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hear you saying there is, what can I learn from this beatdown, this struggle, this moment? If I'm able to get better from it, then I got better. Mm -hmm. And that, that's so big right there. I just want you to catch this. Dave said, I started as a team member. I got moved to a low-volume mall. And through all that and just staying faithful and moving and enduring, and that, that's a great R word, resilience. God said, here's, a, here's somebody that I've found to be available. I'm going to go ahead and elevate his platform and, and use this brother and his family uh, to spark and start the first Chick-fil-A in the city. Man, that gets, him, gets me excited. I don't know about you, but um, I know it gets you excited. It was a blessing, and if you if you think about yeah. if you think about any good movie mm -hmm. or any good any good show or mm -hmm. series, you think about how the main character went through struggle, right. went through trial or multiple trials yeah. before they ended up where they were. So right, yeah. So Absolutely. that's an essential piece of the story. That's that's some of how God set it up, right? Mm -hmm. God set it up to God set it up in such a way that we'd have to be dependent on Him. Amen. so that at the end of the day, he, he would get the glory. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we pray here at Walk Church often is that, God, do something here that's so big that only you could get the credit. Right? We couldn't even think to say that it was us. Mm -hmm. It was him. Yeah. Okay, kind of coming to the conclusion here. Just give us, give us your favorite leadership quote. What's a quote that if you had to just pick one when it comes to leadership, what would you share with somebody watching? What's your favorite one? It's a quick one. But it kind of speaks to who I am as a leader. And it's from Thomas Jefferson. Okay, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. In matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand firm like a rock. Wow. Because <laughs> wow. I have no style. I have no <laughs> style. <laughs> Come on, Dave, um, you got a little style. The, the, all the styles, my, my wife buys my clothes. She's got you. The yeah. only, any style that I have is for my wife. Okay. But, um, but in, matters of, in matters of principle, uh, especially in the things that, that God tells us to do. Mm. God, God's word, um, mm. stand firm as a rock. Stand firm as a rock. Style, swim with the current. Mm -hmm. um, principle, firm like a rock. That's a, that's a helpful word. I, I needed to hear that here today. And I, I think if, 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 we, if we wanted to take it just maybe one step forward is um, maybe consider the Bible to help shape principle. Or absolutely, or, or conviction. It's good. And leadership. And leadership. Yeah. yeah. Jesus was a leader of principle, mm -hmm. kingdom principles. Amen. That's a good thought. Um, maybe in a spirit of transparency, mm -hmm. uh, because we we always we, we value real leadership, mm -hmm. authenticity. I think the people that are leaning in right now would would like to maybe say, okay, we're grateful for the successes, mm -hmm. but Maybe share with us a struggle or share with us along this journey or maybe as of recently, what's maybe a leadership fail or yeah. if that's too strong of a language, what was a moment where you were like, man, I, I would go back and do that different if I could potentially. Definitely. So we, uh, when, when our business got hit the hardest in March yeah. and, and we um, were down about 30% in sales from okay. how we'd been trending yeah. um, and I, I was expecting the, the worst long term. You know, what is, what, what is this going to look like in six months, a year? Right. Sure. Um, especially if the curve continues to go up with cases, with COVID cases. Hmm. And um, we, uh, I, f I felt like the, the time was necessary to actually have a, a, a small layoff. Okay. Um, because it, if we didn't, I felt like if we didn't do the layoff, then we would need to cut everyone's hours a little bit. Right. And so, um, and I'm, I'm not saying that the, that the layoff was the, the, the poor leadership de decision or the, the poor choice in, in that case. Um, but <clears throat> we, we looked at people that, um, that we had that couldn't necessarily adapt to the drive-through, uh, maybe people that were only used to working in the dining room or the front counter um, because we had to go through to just drive-through with, right. uh, uh, for those of you who haven't um, come to Chick-fil-A. Um, and so it, it was either that they couldn't adapt or that um, they had 
they, they didn't have a great attitude. And Got so we, we knew that the time, the time was going to come at some point to end. Yeah. My mistake that I made, my big, big mistake that I made was that I just delegated that layoff mm. to my executive director. Okay. And um, as, a, as someone who values trust yep. and um, transparency, I failed. Mm. I failed in that moment. Um, I should have been there yeah. for that. I should have been there to explain it. I should have been there to, um, to, to talk about next steps for them, um, wh- That's good. whether that be refer- references or unemployment or whatever it may have been. But I, I, w- I was not available at, mm. at the moment that I should have been. And wow. I looked back, and um, I just, uh, that's one that I wish I could have had back. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. One thing I just wrote down that I felt like the Lord spoke to me as you were sharing was this, this idea that trust is established in transparency. Mm-hmm. Trust is built, essentially, when we don't necessarily delegate tough conversations, but mm-hmm. we're transparent ourselves in those conversations. And um, that's something I just learned from you right now that's helpful for me. Oh, and cool. um, so maybe you can even see your, if you, were, if you would call it for yourself a miss, as a gain for somebody else to, to get better with. So thanks for so. sharing that with us. If, if that was helpful even for you, go ahead and type thanks, Dave, in the comments or amen or an emoji, fist pound, something. Um, that was good. That was good. Um, how often do you, do you eat Chick-fil-A during the week, Dave? Oh. I, I'm on a steady Chick-fil-A diet. Steady Chick-fil-A diet. I like uh, it. We yeah. had Chick-fil-A this morning yes. for breakfast. Amen. And I have Chick-fil-A every day for lunch. Okay. <laughs> yes. And uh, um, if you say dinner, so man, we're going to cut this off right now. No. no, <laughs> no remember, the dinner, dinner's at home. Dinner's at home. The, Praise the God. The home-cooked meal's yeah. at home every night right now, which is a blessing. Yeah. But every day. Yeah, I love Chick-fil-A. Amen. If you, if you were starting a basketball team, would you start with Kobe, Jordan, or LeBron? Well, definitely Jordan right now. I mean, how could you not? My man, I told you how this guy is How could you not Jordan right now deal. with uh, The Last Dance? The Last Dance. Jordan is the man. Um, hey, final words, final words to, to those who are leaning in right now. Yeah. Uh, some may be followers of Christ. Some may not. Mm-hmm. Some may be people that just want to grow in leadership. Um, what would you encourage those who are watching with? This is on time, online. What's an on time word for right now? Yeah, absolutely. And I, li- I love that because... Uh, our business is very diverse too. Our yeah. organization is very diverse. Sure. We, don't, we don't have all all believers that work with us. We have all walks of life. Yeah. Um, but there's three steps to the learning. Two two things, if I could share two things. Absolutely. I'm going to take so notes. There there's there's three basic steps to the learning process. Okay. Any learning process. Yep. The first one is: Are you willing to do the work? Okay. Pro- probably yes for you because you're watching the the podcast or, or listening. Okay. Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to go to church? Are you willing to read the leadership book? Are you willing to, to watch the TED Talk? Are you so willing good. to do the work? Are you willing to do the work? Number mm. two, comprehension. Do you understand what is being taught to you? Mm. And if not, do you have the courage to actually ask the question, to, to ask for um, the person to elaborate, to ask the person to explain that in a different way so that so you can good. understand? So good. Because we're in charge of our own learning, and we're in charge of our own leadership. It's self-led. Yep. Yep. And then number three is application. Mm. The learner has to apply what they've learned because knowledge in and of itself is not powerful. You can know everything in the world, but if you don't apply what you you know, that's not powerful at all. Mm -hmm. Um, As a a matter of fact, that's a waste. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so um, tough. you got to practice those three basic principles to to learn and grow. Um, So, Mm. yeah. Do the work. Do you understand, and do you apply? Do you apply what you understand? Man, that's good. Absolutely. And then I, lastly, I would just say that if you want to be a good leader, be, be a good learner. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're all, like we talked about on the phone, yeah. you're just a student of the game. Yeah, uh, I'm a right. student of the game. You're a student of the game. You, 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 we we want to have, have confidence, but we need to have a humble confidence. That's so true. And part of that, that humble confidence is never losing the ability to be teachable or coachable. That's right. Wow. Man, good leaders are good learners. Yeah. Uh, I once heard it put that you can't lead if you don't read. Right? Like God is, is speaking to us. There's a plethora of, there's an ocean of 
books out there that are good, that are helpful. Tell us your favorite leadership book before we close. What's, what's one book that you would recommend or maybe a podcast or something like that, either or, um, that you would recommend before we close this? Yeah, love to. Um, and and this hopefully this speaks to just the uh, immense amount of uh, teachers that there are out there because the the book that I get the most of my life principles from is obviously the Bible for me as a follower of Jesus. But yeah. the the beyond that, the book that I use the most, that I take the most principles from, um, that I use every day on a daily basis by far, is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. So good. Yeah. Seven ha- I'll say it one more time. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. It's a great book, helpful book. Um, has impacted my life as well. It's deep. You go, it's not one that you can just knock out in one sitting. Um, but if you can apply those principles within that book, you'll grow. Hey, would you go ahead and put some clap hand emojis right now in the comment section? Because uh, this was a, a rich leadership lesson this morning. On time, online with Dave Taplin. If you're looking for some good food, consider going to Chick-fil-A on Eastern and Ioni. And um, your guys' delivery system is great. It's fast. It's secure. It's quick. It's hospitable. It's the different words that you shared. And if if you've been blessed by this content, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube right now, that little bell right next to it, that's going to keep you notified with all things happening. Walk Church. Whenever we go live or push out content, you'll be notified. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button so you get notified as well. If you want to share this, please do. Somebody else may may have been benefited by this teaching if you share it. So thank you again for tuning in to On Time Online. We'll be back tomorrow morning uh, for another On Time Online session back through the Beatitudes. And then next Wednesday, we'll do another leadership lean-in like this. And I hope you've been blessed by it. Be encouraged. Thanks, Dave. My pleasure. Thank you. Love you, brother. Love you too. Have a great day.